Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I'm doing my rotation in my Shop My Stash series or my everyday makeup drawer, whatever you want to call it, series. And this is where I, of course, pick out products that I utilize for about a month and then I come back to you and talk to you about the products. This wasn't built to be a declutter series, but it has become somewhat of a decluttering moment in my journey through my makeup collection and just trying to figure out what I like and what I don't like. I've gotten rid of a few products throughout this process, but I also have found some products that are renewed in my collection throughout this, and I hope that sounds like something you're interested in. I go through all the products that I utilized for the last month, and then we pick new products, pull out some new stuff to utilize for the next month, and this is how I get use out of everything in my collection. These are the products that I choose from. I don't pick out uh, any kind of like mascara or eyeliner, brow products, I don't, or palettes. I don't put any of that into this rotation, um, but everything else is free game. So if that sounds something like you're interested in, please keep on watching. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty. I get a lot of education in my position. I'd like to bring you that education here. But I also just kind of like to talk about makeup. That's why I'm here. It soothes my soul. And I hope that you find that my channel also soothes your soul in the way it soothes mine. So with that said, I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. But let's roll into this everyday makeup drawer rotation. We are going to start with the little bins and then we'll move into the bigger bins. I have lips and I have eyes. This is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot and this is just an eye primer. It's not a bad eye primer. I think that it's a decent eye primer. I do like the MAC Paint Pot. I went with Painterly the last time I purchased the Paint Pot because I was like the soft ochre one is a little bit too yellow but I find that this one actually pulls a little bit deep on an eye for me and almost gray. I don't know if you guys can see that in the swatch here. So I don't love using it, but I love the paint pots for eye primer. I just think that I will utilize it for darker eye looks than lighter eye looks and I do like it. It will stay in my collection, of course. All right, so I did have a pigment that I also pulled in. This is the Loose Pigment in Rhyme. This is from Sydney Grace. This is such an older product in my collection and it's just kind of a mess in there. It is a beautiful pigment though and I mean I really really enjoy it. It's got a nice kind of like goldish look to it when you get up close. I've used it a handful of times throughout the last month and it's not bad my goodness can you see it all over. Just the loose products make a damn mess but I do love this pigment. It's got like a real silver feel to it, but a nice like gold reflect. I do like it. I will keep it. These are gorgeous. I just don't find myself pulling for single shadows very often, especially in this kind of way. And I wish I would pull for them more because they are stunning. Like look at how beautiful those are. I think that the green kind of has this little bit of like a bronzy like almost shiftiness to it they're just so pretty they're by El Maquillage and one is the green is in the shade jackpot and the copper is in the shade um, newsflash and they're gorgeous I will be holding on to them I just need to figure out how to get more use out of them in my collection I want to pull for them now these guys are kind of the complete opposite I didn't find that these were very emollient, not very nice to use. I feel like they showed a lot of texture on my eyes a little bit more than I love to admit that I have. I mean, I think that they're gorgeous. This one is the purple and its shade is called Barbecue. And then this one is the gold and its shade is called Turmeric. I think that they're beautiful, but... I did not, I just didn't enjoy using them. I think that you guys can see like even on my hand, like it's just falling into every like fine line that I have 
on my hand. Can you guys see that? I just feel like it, it doesn't do any any favors for my eyes. I have aging eyes. I am 46 years old and this kind of exacerbates all the all the texture that I have on my eyes. I didn't enjoy them. So I do think that I am going to depart with those guys. You know, I've got enough beautiful in my collection to not want to hold on to not beautiful anymore. Now this guy, completely different story. Love it. It's the ColourPop Super Shock in the shade Special Delivery. Look at how beautiful and minty this is. Oh, it's so pretty and it just goes on so beautifully. It's still super, super creamy. This guy has been in my collection for about five years now. I loved this as an inner corner highlight. It was just a really beautiful minty green. So I will be holding on to that. And then this is the Thrive Cosmetics Brilliant Eye Brightener in the shade Stella. It's got a nice like sharpener on one end. This is what this guy looks like. And I use this a lot as a inner corner highlight or as a brow bone highlight. It's just this really pretty, like, like really subtle, but also impactful, creamy champagne color. Oh, so, so pretty. Loved it. So I will be holding on to that for lips. This is a really beautiful lipstick. This is in the shade Mink by Clinique. This is one of the Clinique Even Better Pops. And I love this. I love this shade. I think it's gorgeous. It's really, really nice on the lips. It feels very creamy. It doesn't really go anywhere though. It's not matte. It doesn't dry down super stiff and I just really love it. With that said, I did find that you had to reapply this quite a bit because it does have a little bit more of that emollientness to it. Not necessarily the best at reapplying stuff, but I did get some great usage out of that and reminded me that I really just kind of love this uh, almost like terracotta brown color in on my lips. So we'll be holding on to that. I think this is starting to turn. It doesn't smell awesome. I think that it's not super bad right now. And if I remember correctly, I never, never have liked the smell of the Tower 28 glasses. So I can't tell if it's a turning situation or if it's a um, just has always been this way situation. But I do feel like the formula hasn't changed at all. This is a lot more orange than I remember it being. Like I really have to be rocking like a warm toned eye look for this to look good on my lips. I don't mind this, but I am, I think going to keep it out, put it in my purse and make it like my purse balm to see if I can get more usage out of it prior to it really going bad. So I am gonna keep it, but I do think it's on its way out. This one, I'm really glad I put this in here. I don't know if you guys remember, but when I first bought this, I was like, whose idea was this? This was the dumbest decision I have ever made in purchasing anything. This is the Buxom Full On Plumping Lip Cream and it is in the shade Vanilla Latte. It looks kind of like concealer lips in the bottle. It's so funny because it's a little bit like this, but it's very yellow. It's a lot more yellow than this is. This is definitely very kind of peachy orange. I actually quite loved that. I am really super stoked that I had it in rotation this time because I found myself just pulling for it over and over again because it went perfectly over the top of just about any lip color that I put on my lips. It won't be going anywhere. I really did think it was going to go bye-bye at the end of this little game that we play here. This is a MAC lipstick in the shade Mullet Over. This is one of the Powder Kiss lipsticks and this is actually my favorite formula of the MAC lipsticks just because they're matte but they're also very satin so they feel more emollient. They don't dry down horribly on the lips and make your lips feel awful. It did come off a little bit too orange in some eye looks. This one also part partnered pretty perfectly with this one in the center of the lips. It was just such a gorgeous lip look and I loved it. I will be holding on to that MAC lipstick also. The Powder Kiss formula is really a beautiful formula. I don't think it gets enough hype. This is the Lipstick Queen Altered Universe Lip Gloss, and this is in the shade Meteor Shower. This isn't a bad lip gloss. I just didn't find that I was pulling for it very often. 
um, but it's super, super pretty. And this is like the perfect lip gloss to go in like the center of a lip look that you're trying to make your, your lip look just huge. Like this does that for you. I will be holding on to it. It's a really pretty, even though it looks really gold in the tube, it's very actually kind of champagne-y on the lips. This is a Stila um, Shine Fever Lip Vinyl. And this is in the shade Pit Stop. And I got this in gratis. And as it turns out, I quite liked it. It's actually a liquid lipstick that I think I need to eat my words about because I really did think I was gonna hate this but it's a lot more, I guess, emollient than most liquid lipsticks. And it's so pretty. It's kind of got this like dusty, like orchid shade to it. I think that it looks a lot more purple in here than it actually appears on the lip. I'm just really not sure about these Anastasia lip stains because I felt like these stains dried out my lips so, so bad. And even like putting them on my dry hand. I really do feel like it's actually stinging my dry hand. I feel like there's so much maybe alcohol in this. I wore this one specifically so, so much that my lips currently now I'm trying to bring back to life with constant reapplications of Laneige lip, lip sleeping mask because I mean, I love it but it's one of those products that I'm just gonna have to wear very sparingly. I don't have very many lip stains at all, which is why I'm gonna keep these. I just can't wear them that much. I think that they do a really good job doing what they promise they're gonna do, which is, you know, go on your lips, stay on your lips, and have your lips be stained. Yes, your lips are stained. But I think that this one, the stain comes out quite a bit more pink than I anticipated. So I'm not as impressed with that one, but I am going to keep it in my collection because it is a red and I don't have very many reds. And if I'm going to wear a red, I would rather it be a red that's going to stay put than one that's going to go everywhere. This I did not even use, but I'm going to put it back. The color of this is not something I'm going to wear this time of year. It's just not. I mean, it's a beautiful coral, but it's just not something I'm going to wear. So I am going to put it back and we're going to hold on to it until I use it again. This orange has got to go. <laughs> this is the ugliest lip liner ever, ever. Like what? Colourpop lip pencils are okay to use around your eye, right? I need to check on that. But I do have an orange eyeliner. Uh, it's a different colour. I think I'm going to repurpose this as an eyeliner. We're going to put it in with the eyeliners because this was horrid on my lips and I won't be wearing it on my lips. This is the shade Absolute Zero in the ColourPop Lippy Stick. This one, beautiful. This was gorgeous, but I could only wear it in conjunction with like this lipstick and that went so perfectly together. I didn't use this throughout the center. I used it to deepen up the outer edges of my lips and I love it in that way. This is in the shade Flattered. I really do like it. This one, not 100% sold on whether I like it or not. It is what is on my lips today and it's a nice like nude tone so I will hold on to it. I do think that it could go either way, but I do think it's got a little bit more of a coral kick to it than I love on my lips, but I will hold on to it. This one I didn't even try. It is Chi Chi is what it is. It just feels like a really hot red. And while I did not try it, I do think that it probably deserves to go back into the bin because I really didn't even have a red lipstick here to try it with. So, uh, I guess I had this. I didn't try this lip product either. Uh, I think that that is a little bit more orange than that is though. What do we think? You know, I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna leave these two items in here and then put the rest back. But this, as much as I'm like bitching about the coral shade on my lips, I loved this on my lips. So pretty. And it's just subdued enough that it doesn't look like orange. It looks almost more pink. But this is the Hourglass Confessions lipstick. And this one is in All of Me. And it's just, 
it's so pretty so and so comfortable you guys these lipsticks are so so comfortable I haven't tried this one but I know that this one feels so good it's got to be the same right it felt so good on the lips it stayed forever it's got really great lasting power so these are what I will be keeping and I am done with the lips let's do complexion so there's not much in here that I'm not going to keep around. This is too new. I do have to say, like, it's not my favorite thing. I guess maybe I don't understand it, but, like, it spits and spurts at me, which drives me freaking bonkers. This is what it looks like. It's supposed to be, I think, a color correcting product and not necessarily a coverage product. It doesn't have, I would say it doesn't have any kind of coverage. I mean, look, you can see even that like lip stain underneath of it. I do think that it also isn't serum -y enough or emollient enough to sink into my skin in a way that doesn't look crepey almost. So this is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener and I'm just not sure about it at this point yet. This is in the shade Seashell. I'm gonna hold on to it, but note that I am kind of unsure about it. This, this is going. This is, this is awful in my humble opinion. It just doesn't work for me. I love Benefit Cosmetics for the most part. I'm just not a fan of this. It reminds me a lot of Shape Tape and you all know how I feel about Shape Tape. So I would say that it might be because this is, you know, older in my collection, but I firmly feel it's such a full coverage concealer and that's just not my bag right so if you like full coverage you for sure will like this I am positive of it so I will be decluttering this to my daughter more than likely this was a really pretty color corrector and as a matter of fact I really liked this one a lot more than I liked the Fenty one if I'm honest but this one is the Urban Decay Stay Naked color correcting fluid and this is in the shade peach and this is so old. I don't even think that they sell this anymore, if I'm honest. But, I mean, it was just a perfect, like, peach tone color corrector, in my humble opinion. And it went on in a way that helped to make my skin look better, not worse. Um, whereas I feel like this one just kind of sat on top of my skin. This one definitely didn't. It didn't exacerbate any fine lines. It didn't exacerbate any texture. So I really did love it. I will hold on to it. And this is probably my favorite fuller coverage concealer. I did wear this quite a bit. This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Correcting Concealer. And this is in the shade 30NN. It's so much like a serum. It's not super cakey. It doesn't like get into my fine lines and wrinkles and exacerbate the texture on my under eyes for certain. It looks really good all over my face. I mean, I think that you guys can see, like I put it on just like I would put it on underneath my eyes and there's just no texture that it is creating by being a full coverage concealer. So this one I will be holding on to for sure. This will stay. This is the Bobbi Brown uh, face base. It is, to be honest, almost gone. It's a primer that I absolutely love in my collection. It won't be going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I think I put it in my planned pan for 2023 and when it's done, I am purchasing another one because I can't be without it. It's a wonderful moisturizing face primer. I love that it's got the vitamin E in it. I love that. It, I love what it does to my skin. My skin that's normally really dry and reptilian feels amazing when I am using this product. So I will be definitely holding on to that. But this, I'm just not super sure about if I'm honest. Every time I put it on, I think that my makeup looked really good. So I'll be holding on to it for that reason. But you guys, look at this. <laughs> like how gross is that? And then in 20 minutes as I let it sit, it will reformulate and look like water in there. It's really, really clear, really, really nice. It's not like, you know, super sticky. Um, I feel like it's pretty hydrating, which also makes me want to have it, but it's like just this water gel that is just, 
it's it's the texture of it the texture of it is for me just really weird I don't know what to do with it at this point in time I am gonna hold on to it but I feel like it's one of those primers that I could probably get rid of and not miss ever so I have these two guys in here Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac is not going anywhere this is the tinted glow hydrator it's a medium coverage like almost like tinted moisturizer but not it's in the shade 41 light medium I would say it performs much like a skin tint in that it's super easy to use super easy to apply it, it go it gets along with just about anything I put underneath of it or on top of it and it's so so pretty my skin it I mean it goes on the skin this it's very breathable with the skin it's just beautiful but it's got like a really decent medium if not like high medium coverage on it so therefore not a skin tint right this is definitely a foundation but it's a foundation that acts like a skin tint so I will be holding on to that guy this one, <laughs> this is the Glowish Multi Dew. So this is a skin tint and I have the shade light medium. So it performs like a skin tint, meaning that it goes on your skin and you can see like all the things underneath your skin. It doesn't exacerbate any kind of texture or anything, but it doesn't help it either, except for detracts from it because it is like wearing a disco ball so I feel like when I use this I have to use this with something matte over the top of it to kind of counteract the straight up like glow that this gives in addition to that I really do feel like you guys can see the color I really do feel like I got like the wrong color. So I have to take this all the way down my neck and then go over it with a powder to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. But can you guys see, I mean, just the straight up craziness of how shiny this is. It's like grease. So it makes me not want to pull from it for it because I just feel like I'm doing literally everything to make it work for me. I liked it underneath like a matte foundation, but honestly, I don't have a whole lot of matte foundations in my life. Mm, I wonder if I put some lightning drops in this, if it would mattify it just enough to. That's one thing that I didn't try. I think I'm going to hold on to this, try it that way, and then go from there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I love this, but I hate how shiny it is. I love what it looks like on my skin, and I love how it feels on my skin, but I do not, do not love how shiny it is. Like, I'm a dry girl, and this makes me look like I took chicken grease and slathered it all over my face. So... I think I'm going to try it with these because these mixing mediums, they change the foundation um, formula just a little bit on the leaning matte side. I think if I tried this, it would make it lighter and it would make it less glowy and a little bit more matte. I think I'm going to try that before I decide whether I'm getting rid of this or no. And then we have these. So the Makeup Forever Ultra HD, beautiful, love this formula. I think this is probably the wrong shade for me. This is Y218. I think it is um, just a smidge bit too light. And here's the truth of this is that I ordered this from Ipsy when they were switching out the formulas and the bottles and I got the wrong shade the first time I ordered it. So then I ordered something much, much lighter thinking that I would mix them. And now I don't know what I've done with the old one. I think I maybe gave it away. So then I have to mix it in with something else. And mixing it in with this, like I said, putting these mixes in changes the formula. And then I don't necessarily love it as much as I love it when it's just on its own. So I am going to keep it. I do have the debronzy drops. I haven't tried mixing these in to make a foundation darker. But I'm afraid to try that in the middle of winter. So I'm going to try it in summer. I'm going to hold on to that because I love that. And then th that formula anyways. And then this is the Chanel Numero Un. It is their like Camilla flower foundation. And man, I love this foundation. It feels so good on my skin. And as crazy yellow as this looks... I can actually make it work on my skin, but I do think that 
even though I was shade matched by the Chanel lady, I do think that this is the wrong shade for me. But I'm going to keep this foundation because this is a $70 foundation and it is such a beautiful foundation on my skin. It's got a nice like medium coverage without looking cakey and gross. And I feel like this is one of those foundations that my skin continues to feel better every single time I wear it. So this is the powder that I've been using. And you know, here's the thing. Like this is beautiful, but I don't love powders. And this powder is no different. I hate this. I think that this is stupid. And even though I only used it like on my face one time, now I feel like I can't do anything with this powder without, I hate the puff. I hate puffs. I think they're dumb. Um, with that said, like this powder isn't a bad powder, but it's just a powder that is just a powder. I don't think it's super finely milled. I don't think it's really pretty on the skin. I also don't think it's awful on the skin. So because of that, I will hang on to this because I don't think it is ultra drying. So in terms of like, is it more like Laura Mercier or is it more like, you know, by Terry, as far as I'm concerned, I think it kind of falls somewhere in the middle of these powders for me. And therefore I'm not quite certain that I want to get rid of it yet. But again, I'm on this powder journey. We're putting a powder into every rotation and I'm just not sure where that's going to land at the end of the day. I know my friend JC likes it a lot and maybe I'll give it to her. I have the Juvia's Place Bronze Medium Palette and this is two bronzers. I feel like this one is way too red for me. Definitely super orangey, red toned. And this one is almost too yellow for me, but I really like them mixed together. They're beautiful mixed together. So I will kind of hold on to this for a little bit anyways to see if I can get, you know, just the perfect bronzer out of them. I wish that there was like some happy medium here. And if I'm honest with you, the one I used the most was this one here. Matches my skin tone better than the red one does. At the end of the day, I would probably use this pan and then declutter that one. Or if I could pull it out, I would pull this pan out and declutter that one. But that's where we are with that. I, I do enjoy it. I'll keep it. I found a renewed love for this. This was a beautiful inner corner highlight. This was a beautiful face highlight. This is the Kevin Aquan Nia Limelight Highlighter in Ibiza, which is iridescent glow. I kind of just love that there's like three different tones of highlight that you can get from this. Kind of a purple and a pink and a champagne-y color. Like that is how it appears on the face, but I think also like mixed together, it's very white and stark and natural and I think that that is beautiful so I will be holding on to this which actually kind of shocked me this I mean I know it still looks like I've not used it but I have used every single one of these highlights in here I don't mind this I mean they're beautiful and it has that wet look without having like an over an over complicated powdery feel. I love it. I am gonna hold on to it and I used it so many times and it doesn't appear as if I have used it at all, but I promise you I have. It's beautiful. This is the Living My Best Light in um, Delicate. It's the Bouncing Beam Multi-Use Highlighter Palette by Beauty Bay. And I think it's just really pretty. So I'm gonna hold on to it. Now this, I thought I was gonna love, and I actually quite didn't. This is the Zoeva Opulence Face Palette. I don't mind it, so let's start there. But this blush here was absolutely atrocious, awful, hard to blend out, didn't love it. It's super, super pigmented, and to some extent, I think that that is awesome. But to some extent, I also think that it's awful, especially for a blush that doesn't blend out. I did love this one. This one, gorgeous, gorgeous blush. Loved it. And then this is the highlight, which I also think is a beautiful highlight. So because there are two out of the three in here that I love, I will be holding on to this. But this is the reason why I bought this palette and I hated it. I hated it so much. And the biggest reason why is because it just doesn't blend 
without being like a patchy mess. The Where you put it on is where it's going to stay and trying to blend it out is like more power to you. Good luck. Good luck to you. This Makeup by Mario Sculpting Stick perfection such a beautiful sculpting stick it's got a nice undertone to it i will forever have this in my collection i finally found the perfect way to use that and that's you know taking a brush putting the brush over the top of it and then putting that brush on my face to blend versus going on my face this is going this is the tarte tartus pro glow this is a liquid highlighter and it is in the shade stunner and while i believe that this is gorgeous i do think that this is just not the formula for me i definitely think it's just too thick in my humble opinion for me i like a much lighter less heavy version of a highlight and every single time I wore this I felt like it was just too heavy on my skin and um, this I actually fell in love with as a highlight I loved that I could get a really detailed brush into any of these colors that I wanted to I don't know if you guys can see the difference I'm sure that you can but one's a little more bronzy one's a little more white and then of course this pink one and this deep one are you know a little bit more I really dug this one, but definitely not one that I can wear as a highlight for sure, but one that I can wear as like a blush topper. Looks like that. I just really loved that this was like five different shades of highlight in one because then I could also like just mix it all together and get this really beautiful highlight that is kind of almost natural and wet looking and lacks color even though there's so much color in this i loved this as a highlight so i will be holding on to it this highlight another stunner loved having it love having it because it's hello kitty you know once the kitty is worn off <laughs> i'm gonna be super sad i tried to stick as much as i could either outside her face or inside her face but it's just a really pretty i feel like um natural i'm gonna say that over and over again natural looking highlight in that it doesn't look like a powder and it's not like super seamy from the moon as far as a highlight goes i do feel like it's got a little bit of shine that it brings to the skin but it's more natural in appearance than anything else so i really did like that this illamasqua is in the shade omg and it's already got hard pan and that irritates the piss out of me. It's like every single time a brush touches it, it just creates hard pan. And I feel like it's not pretty enough for me to deal with the bullshit, if I'm honest with you. It's a giant pan of highlight. But if I have to battle it every single time I want to use it, I just don't know if it's worth it. I am going to hold on to it. I'm going to try it some more to see how I truly feel about it. But at this point, it's one of those highlighters that I'm like, am I really going to pull for it? Because I have beautiful highlighters in my collection. I don't necessarily need that one. I have three cream blushes that I pulled in here. Um, two of the Cheeks Out by Fenty. This is the Fenty Glow and Rose Latte. Rose Latte is kind of like this terracotta color. And then we have Fenty Glow, which is this like honestly really gorgeous like brown natural peachy shade to the cheeks. And then we have the Rare Beauty Melting Balm, I think it's called, um, blush. And it is in the shade uh nearly mauve so i had a little bit of everything right i had a terracotta i had a peach and i had a pink i don't know that i love any of these <laughs> when it comes down to it i especially did not love this one because it just did not show up on my skin yes it's showing up on my hand but when I turn my hand, you can't even tell I have it on my hand. So, I mean, it's a great cream blush for the days that I don't want to wear a whole lot of makeup. And believe me, I, I have been going through kind of a rough patch. And I just didn't, I don't ever feel motivated to put makeup on my face anymore. And so I wasn't wearing a whole lot of makeup. But one thing I was wearing was that blush because it was easy to, like, make me look put together even though I'm not put together it was just enough 
what I love about these two also is there, or this one specifically, is it's not super matte, right? It's, it's not super matte. It goes on. It's got kind of this like glossy sheeniness to it, which also like can double as a highlighter as well on my face. So I didn't really have to put anything else on top of my skin to feel done with that on. Whereas this one is kind of matte and this one is kind of matte. I don't mind them, but I'm not 100% sold on ever needing them in my collection or whether I actually want to use them on a regular basis. They were almost products that I thought I was putting in here to declutter at the end of the month. I am going to keep them for now. I don't know how much longer these are going to last in my collection, if I'm honest. These two bronzers I had in here were beautiful. I will hold on to them. They're a little bit different in color, even though I think that honestly, this one looks a lot darker on the screen. In reality, I feel like this one is darker. This one is the Vesca bronzer in Kissed by Santorini. And then this one is the LIS bronzer in the shade Motivate, which is the lightest one that they had when I purchased it. I love them both. They're both like really beautiful bronzers. They're both really light, so they're great for this season. If I'm honest, one of them could probably go because they are almost the same color, but I enjoy both of them. So I am, I'm gonna keep them both because I'm not about just getting rid of shit just to get rid of it. This Dior blush, I actually really love. This is the backstage um, rosy glow blush. And I think that you can see like right here, kind of the embossing is no longer on this guy. Such a beautiful blush. And I feel like this is the perfect like size of blush also. And I feel like swatching it doesn't do it any justice because you really can't see it on my skin. But my God, it does something magical to your skin. It's like it turns a completely different color on your face. It reminds me a lot of the same sentiments I say about the Dior Powder No Powder and how it creates like this, it's got like this magic touch on your skin. It's crazy to me, but it truly is unexplainable how I feel about what that blush does on my skin. This one is the um, Bare Minerals Bronzer, and this one is in the Kiss of Rose shade, and I have Kiss of Copper also. Bare Minerals really knocked it out of the park with these. They're so, so beautiful on the skin, and I love that they brought them back and made them permanent. I have Kiss of Rose. I have Kiss of Copper. I guess I need the other one, but I but I don't also. I love that you can wear this and this alone. Like you don't really have to have a bronzer and a highlight to go with it to make it look just healthy on your cheeks. It's such a beautiful, beautiful blush. And then we have the Milani Baked Powder Blush in Berry Amore. You know, I wasn't as unimpressed with this one as I was the Milani Luminoso. But I also just think that it's one of those blushes that I didn't love. I didn't want to pull for. It wasn't anything special on my skin. I think it was a little bit powdery for me, if I'm honest. I feel like it just sits on top of my skin versus becoming one with my skin and, and, and meshing well with all the products, you know, playing well with all the products around it. So I am going to declutter that. And then this is the Benefit Butterfly Blush. And oh my God, I cannot believe I feel the way that I do about this bright orange blush, especially considering how I feel about the bright red one in the Opulence palette. But there is a giant difference. This one, it blends so beautifully into your skin, becomes one with your skin and doesn't fight against everything it's sitting on your skin with and instead just kind of melds into perfection, right? Um, it's such a beautiful blending bl blush and I love, love the crazy orange of it. It's just so flattering actually, which was kind of surprising. So these five products are going into my declutter and the rest will be staying. I am going to pick more products and then we will get you out of here. Okay, here we are in the lip section. 
And I think as far as liquid lips go, pull in this one by Milk. This is the Milk Makeup Lip Vinyl, and it's not new in my collection, but I've never used it. I also think I'm going to pull in this, which is the Lip Bond by Urban Decay. I really find myself loving this formula, if I'm honest. I think I also want to pull in this one by Hank and Henry. This is super old in my collection. I'd like to see if it's still good at all. This is in the shade Petal Pushers. We're going to go with those for liquid lipsticks. I think for glosses, I am going to pull in this one by Fenty because I just did my haul in retrospect for December of last year and realized that I've had this in my collection for all year and haven't used it. This one is in Chocolat Fantasy or something like that. So I am going to pull this one in. I'm also going to pull in this one by NARS. This is in, I think it's Laguna. This is a fairly new lip gloss that I just brought in from NARS. So I'm going to put that in as well. And then for more of a, like, just a pinky tone, I think I'm going to bring in this one by Buxom. This is one of the full-on lip creams, and this one is in the shade Seychelles. So I'm going to bring that one in too. I think three lip glosses is probably enough. And then for lipsticks, I am actually kind of feeling like the brownie tones. So I do think I'm going to bring this one in by ABH. This one is in the shade Praline, if I remember correctly. It'll just be a nice little neutral one to go on the inner part of the lips. And yes, that is in the shade Praline. It's a really nice beautiful nude and then I am also going to pull in this one by Juvia's Place. This one is in the shade and it is a brown and this one I kind of go back and forth with on whether I actually want it in my collection or no and then I am going to pull in a pinky nude probably mm, let's do this one. This is Back Talk by Urban Decay and I remember loving this so much, and this is just a mini. I remember loving it so, so much, and I haven't worn it in forever. So I think I'm going to pull in that one. Honestly, I think this is Bad and Bear. Bad and Bear. Ooh, let's pull in that one. I haven't tried that one. Let's, let's pull in that one. Okay, I think that's it for those. As far as lip liners go, I do think that I need kind of a quasi-brown one. Let's pull in these two from Kylie. I think we've had one of them in already. But I also, whoops, dropped that. I also want to pull in the brown from the previous place collection because... I bought it to go with these and maybe I'll pull in the pink. So I'll have both of them from Kylie and both of them from Juvia's Place. These two Kylie ones are rather nude and then this is kind of like a brownie orange, of a, almost like a terracotta brown. And this one is kind of like a pink. Like what about that one? That's kind of a brownie mauve. What about this one? This one right here. Let's bring in these two also. I have no idea. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants over here with the lip products. Oh, wow, are these right? Ooh, let's bring in this from Nude Sticks too. And this Marc Jacobs crayon. Yeah, I do pull in, I think, way too many. I mean, look, I can't. If, barely all fits in there. For complexion, we have these guys here. I am going to pull in this guy, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I've got the shade Natural. I'm going to pull that in. I think I'm also going to pull in this um, from Zoeva. This is the Natural um, Authentic Skin Natural Luminous Foundation. 
I remember really loving this, but it's been a while since I used it, mostly because it's really, really light. So we're gonna pull in that. Actually, I think I'm gonna pull in this too, just to get some more usage out of it. I did use it in a, like, get ready with me, utilizing the stuff that I bought in the Sephora sale, but I haven't used it otherwise. So I'm gonna pull in this one also. All right, for primers, I have these guys up here, but I also have these guys down here. And I've got, like, this is, these are all really luminous, so I don't necessarily need a luminous primer, if I'm honest. I'm going to pull in this one. No, because I just have that. I'm going to pull in this, because it's also one that I brought into my collection through the Sephora sale. I'm going to pull in this as well. For these guys, concealers, I am going to pull in this Juvia's Place one because it's it's really light. I also think I am going to pull in, I want to get the use out of this before it goes bad in my collection. I think from a corrector standpoint, I think I'm going to pull back in this MAC because I love that guy and it's been a while since I've used it. I do have this new powder that came into my life in the last like gratis uh, thing that I got when I went to um, Las Vegas in October, but I don't think I hold in that stuff. I just forgot all about it. So I do want to use this, but I don't think now is the time. I think what I'm going to actually do is do this. I'm going to bring in this powder. This has a a matte powder and a glowy powder. I haven't used this in forever and just want to try it to see how I feel about it and then go from there and maybe something that I declutter. So this is like its last hurrah. So that's what we have for complexion. It's so interesting to be in this drawer and not have it overflowing um, since doing my blush declutter, which I will link up in the cards for you guys, but I love what my drawer looks like now <laughs> um so I do want to get some use out of these guys because I've had these in my collection now for ever since they launched and I haven't really gotten a whole lot of usage out of them so I do think I want to bring in a couple let's do um I think that one's too bright for what I'm going after right now yeah. let's do this one which is Willa. I haven't used that yet. I think I want to do Terra also. Kind of like a terracotta. I think I'm going to pull in this one also. So I've got those two. I think I'm also going to pull in, I think I'm going to pull in this Bounce and Blur blush by Bare Minerals in Mauve Sunrise. It's just a really pretty like pinky mauve and it's got kind of an interesting texture. And I think I'm also going to pull in one of these. I think I want not this one. I think I want this one, which is Warm Honey. Um, I think I also want to pull in a couple of these. These are fairly new. I think I want to pull in this one. That'll be interesting, right? This is in the shade Empower, and I kind of dig that. Let's pull in that. And then let's pull in this blush palette also by NARS, which is new from that Sephora haul. And I haven't even used it yet. So yeah, I'm good on blush. Okay, as far as bronzer goes, I am, you know, uh, I mean, I guess this is a face palette, not really a bronzer. But I am going to pull in this. This has got a couple more blushes, it's got a couple of highlights, and it's got a bronzer. I want to bring in this, which is the Fenty um, Sun Stalker in Island Ting. It's been forever, I think, since I've used this. And I'll be happy to have that in. And then I am also, I think, going to bring in the Patrick Ta. She's sculpted also. And then I'm also going to bring in the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand because all those are new. Three bronzers plus the one that's in my hourglass. Yeah, I think we're good on bronzers. I think I accidentally hit don't record, but I'm pulling this in. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wand in Spotlight. I am also pulling in this from Becca. This is one of the Shimmering Skin Perfectors that I haven't used yet, and this is in 
pearl, which is super icy. So that'll be interesting. I am also going to pull in this one, which is make your own light. I feel like this will go really good over the top of a couple of those blushes as a blush topper. It's kind of corally, but also kind of fiery red. It's kind of dual chromatic. So I feel like that'll go good with those. I also want to pull in MAC Soft and Gentle. Again, it's been a long time since I've used this. And there was a couple in here that I hadn't used also. Maybe a couple in Ofra. Mm, I think I've got enough highlighters for this go. Maybe I'll pull in some Ofra next time. But while we're thinking about it, I am going to go back. I'm back in here in the blushes. And I am going to pull in the pink gasm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that in also. So we have some liquid eye products here. I do have these on a planned pan. So I am going to pull these in just to like kickstart my planned pan with them. These are some Stila Shimmering Glows. I do have um, Pagale, Jezebel, and Kitten in these three so I think that's it and then when I go to like these guys I do think that I am going to pull in these guys as well these dazzle sticks all by KVD I have four different shades here I am going to pull all these in this one is the only one that I've ever used in the past and I really really love it and then I think from a like stick perspective because I've always got a stick going I am going to pull in this just because I love the white base that it is able to provide for eye looks and I've not had that lately as far as glitters and pigments go mm, I think I kind of want to steer clear of pigments this time around that last pigment has been in my um, shop my stash for like ever I feel like but I am going to pull in I think these Marc Jacobs sequins I have the shade Topaz Flash which is kind of a copper and then I have Glam Noir which is a really deep shade I think like almost a black this will go really well with any kind of like smoky eye I want to do for the holiday season I think I'm actually also going to pull in this silver from KVD. This is in the shade um, Static Age. This is a beautiful silver. I don't think I want to pull in any of these. I think I'm going to leave the Super Shocks in here. I think I'm going to leave all these in here. These I might pull one of these in for like inner corner and probably I think I need to pull in flexitarian because I got that in gratis and I haven't I haven't even I've never tried flexitarian it's such a such a big you know pull in the beauty community I do think though that this is on my um, planned pan for 2023 as well so to kick start that I'm gonna put that in here as well and that would be it for eye products. Okay, this is what my shop, my stash is looking like right now. And I had to rearrange some things. So typically my lip products go in here, my eye products go in here, and then it goes palettes, blush and bronzer, complexion, and then this is my project pan stuff. But I had to put blushes in one of the smaller ones, which is crazy to me because I mean, there's five blushes in here, but that doesn't seem like a lot. But then I also have, you know, two palettes in here that have more blush in them. So, like, I get why I don't have very many blushes, but it kind of makes me have a little bit of anxiety. In the palette drawer, I have all of my palettes and my highlights and my, like, duos even and my contours and bronzers <laughs> because I just have too many lip products. What that should say is you need to deplete your lip product piece of this, but I mean, I, I think I am only feeling a little bit anxious about it because 
of the way it is situated in here, but there are no rules. I make the rules and I do want to bring in all of these lip products and they don't all fit in here. So I have to make sense of it somehow and this is how I'm making sense of it. But that is what we have going into Shop My Stash um, for this rotation and I hope that you guys had fun today. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you'll want to give it a big thumbs up before you leave. And I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go because I would love to have you along for this crazy journey of mine. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I appreciate you all so much. Have an awesome day, an awesome week, an awesome month, and happy holidays to those of you that celebrate and happy December to those of you that do not. I appreciate all of you. I hope that you all are safe and healthy and getting along as best you can in this world that we're living in today. And until next time, bye friends.